Corporate America lining up behind the debt ceiling deal reached over the long weekend by President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. The agreement would see flat spending next year and cap growth at 1% in 2025. Military spending would rise 3% this year. Uh, money would be reallocated from the IRS and food stamp recipients. We'll have to work until age 54. Our next guest uh, is urging Congress uh, to pass the legislation. Uh, joining us now, Josh Bolton, President and CEO of the Business Roundtable. Josh, I, I saw a lot of different business groups uh, weighing in, and, and uh, I'm going to say this nicely. This was not your first rodeo. Uh, you, you are, you're an old hand. You've uh, seen this movie before. I don't know how many cliches I can use. Uh, were you watching um, with interest? Uh, were you bemused? Were you horrified? Or were you just saying, you know, this is business as usual, sausage making is ugly, they'll get it done? Uh, good morning, Joe. All of the above. Yeah. You, you figure that... I mean, did you come out with a statement that said, guys, gals, we don't need this right now. You know, we got interest rates going up. We got a possible recession on the horizon. We got $32 trillion in debt. Do this so that we can, you know, get back to trying to manage some of our, our really daunting problems. Yeah, Joe, we put out a lot of statements precisely to that effect. Um, very strong statements saying uh, default is not an option. You, ha you have to do this. Go ahead and have a serious negotiation about um, how best to restrain at least immediate federal spending and, uh, and several of the other issues. But there's no doubt that it was absolutely necessary that they reach this agreement. And it's absolutely necessary that it pass both the House and the Senate uh, in the next week. And you obviously have members that across the gamut, the entire spectrum from uh, from Republicans to Democrats. I'm sure you even get, you know, far out on, on both sides. Did you have a preference? Would you would you have uh, supported a clean raise, or did you think uh, did you agree with Kevin McCarthy's position uh, that we needed to to at least address spending that. It, after what we've seen the last couple of years, last two administrations, where we're, you know, really have added with the pandemic, have added to our, our long-term debt. Yeah, well, we knew from the beginning that a clean debt ceiling raise was not going to be on the cards because uh, Republicans control one of the uh, three entities that need to agree on this. The House, the Senate, and the White House need, need to reach agreement on this kind of big issue. Uh, and the Republicans control the House. So we knew from the start that uh, a clean debt ceiling was not going to happen, that Republicans were going to want to use their leverage uh, to get some of the things that they were, uh, they were hoping for. And they did get some of the stuff. I thought the negotiation was well handled by, uh, by both the Speaker and the White House. Uh, and we're super relieved that they were able to reach an agreement. And now we're putting our shoulder behind uh, trying to help them get the votes to get it across the finish line. So it, it, in terms of, I don't want you to rate, rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 in, in terms of what it does to try to, to rein in uh, some of the, the deficit spending, but w what provisions are, are most helpful in, in your view that, that, uh, that McCarthy was able to extract? Well, they've got spending caps in place for uh, the next two budget cycles, and, and that's really all this Congress can do because uh, this Congress can't bind future Congresses. So they did about as well as they could on spending caps over the short run. Uh, Joe, they did something else important, which is that uh, they put in place a mechanism that incents the Congress to pass all of the appropriations bills on time. Uh, in fact, the mechanism they put in place is pretty clever that it, uh, it reduces the overall amount of money available if Congress is not able to, uh, to pass individual appropriations bills. And that's a, that's a really good government thing because it, uh, you, you don't want government operating on just the same levels or slightly up, slightly down for all the same stuff they've been spending on. 
you want our policymakers to actually be making judgments about what the priorities are within the budget box. Um, so we were particularly pleased to see that process reform.